Millions of Californians headed to the polls today for the recall election and joining us now to break down what we can expect is Michael Smolens, a political columnist from the San Diego Union Tribune. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Raul. That's a loaded question, isn't it? What we can expect today. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, you know, we'll wait to see what the results say. As you know, the, all the polls uniformly have shown the recall well behind at this stage by double digits, in some cases 20 or nearly 20 points. But we'll see. Polls have been wrong before. It would be the probably the biggest polling failure if the recall wins uh, in the history of the United States. So we'll, we'll see. But the, the, the Newsom camp, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom's camp, feels very confident. In fact, one of his campaign aides, uh, breaking sort of protocol, yesterday said he just can't see a scenario where the recall wins. That was yesterday. We'll just have mm. to see. Yeah, careful, careful, though, with the words you choose to say yeah. things like that. Last night, President Biden was here campaigning with the governor, uh, truly a referendum on the president and his power for the first time in a major election like this. Uh, what do you think this means? Well, I think, you know, the, the president came out, uh, former President Barack Obama did a campaign mm -hmm. ad, Senators uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders campaigned in person or in ads. Uh, these are very popular people in California. I know the president uh, has had a rough couple of weeks since the Afghanistan um, pullout, but uh, you know, really the, the biggest person that has helped Gavin Newsom is Larry Elder, the conservative radio talk show mm -hmm. host who is a recall replacement candidate. You know, his views are, are uh, diametrically opposed to the majority of Californians and their views, and that really changed the dynamic of the race. It actually really became more of a, a referendum on Larry Elder then Governor Newsom, which when you think about it, is really remarkable in a recall of a governor. This is very true. And then the connections with uh, President Trump also started because of Larry Elder's connection there. It, do you think Larry Elder, assuming, let's just kind of jump uh, ahead a couple, uh, mm -hmm. let's say Newsom stays in office. Do you think Larry Elder will be interested in running again for governor next year? Because again, we only have, the, what is it, like 11 months or so, or like another year in the term. Uh, he said at the outset he was planning on running in 2022. Hmm. We'll have to see what happens after the election. But if the polls, both for the recall holdup and for him, I mean, he is far and away the leading candidate. As we know, really, there's it's only a Republican field. There's really no big name Democrat. So he could run. Uh, he isn't likely to win. I don't think any Republican, uh, even a more moderate Republican, is likely to win in the very Democratic state of California in a regular election. Remember, you know, the recall rules are, are really odd in that it takes a majority to to, to oust the governor, but only, right. you know, the candidate with the most votes would replace him. So it could be a very small plurality in the 20 to 30 percentages. You know what? That leads me to my next question. I wanted to ask you, because some of the Democrats have been thinking about perhaps uh, some reforms. Uh, for our recall elections, easier said than done. Maybe raising the threshold required for the for the signatures or or like you said, uh, only 50 percent is required to stay in office, but then somebody potentially with 15, 16 percent could then become the governor of your state. Will you see reforms, you think, in the near future or not? There will certainly be attempt whether we see them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there's going to have to be a bipartisan buy in in this. And the, the question is, can they convince Republicans to join in? Because should Republicans gain power, uh, you know, get a governor in office, uh, with a low recall threshold in a democratic state like California, they might want that protection. Uh, people around the country really shake their head. This is so unusual to them that the governor could actually get more votes yet lose office <laughs> than the replacement candidate. Yeah, it's a head scratcher, isn't it? Um, I wanted to talk about some of the Republicans already claiming voter fraud. Uh, the election is not over. Today's election day. Um, how do you analyze that? And is that kind of the new talking point? Well, it gets tiresome to have to say that there's no evidence, uh, that there's no inkling that this is really there's any fraud out there. Um, I think you also have to remember that that the, the this is probably part of the plan from the beginning, mm -hmm. but it really ramped up after the polls showed uh, the recall losing. Remember, for a while their polls showed it very close. So that's suspicious in and of itself. Will it change in Cali much in California? No. California really strives to make voting as accessible as possible. But 
you know, the myth that there might have been something wrong with the California election would resonate as it did mm-hmm. with some Republicans, a lot of Republicans, frankly, from the 2020 election. And that may give motivation to, yeah. to further restrict voting in some states where we've seen. Uh, so that's a, a real concern. But, yeah. you know, again, this is right out of the Trump playbook. Remember, they're claiming fraud before the votes have even been t- tallied or, or the yeah. results have come public. Despite a lack of evidence, despite Supreme Court rulings and what have you, uh, I wanted to ask about some of the, you know, the 46 candidates uh, that are running for this office. The, the more recognizable ones are barely registering in single digits here, including our own former mayor, Kevin Faulkner. Um, why stay in this race? Is this about name recognition ahead of maybe running again next year or holding different offices? Or what is the purpose of this? Well, I think it's difficult once you get launched into this. I mean, let's remember that that Kevin Faulkner, like last fall, really had been running. He had announced to run for 2022. So I think that that the the recall came up and was this opportunity. Uh, I guess he's still I would think he's still planning on running. But those numbers do not look good. Same thing with uh, Rancho Santa Fe businessman John Cox. He, of course, lost in a landslide to Newsom in 2018. But he's in there. And I think that you know, once you're in, you're you're in for the, the the duration. As we've seen, things have shifted a lot, so you just don't know if things can turn more in your favor. And let's remember, Elder didn't get in. I think it wasn't until June. Yeah. So, before then, while they weren't getting much in the polls, both uh, Faulkner and Cox were sort of at the, the the top of the replacement candidates. Again, with very small percentages. But had Elder not gotten in, um, sure. and who knows if Elder somehow had flamed out or, or not taken off like he had. Maybe they're thinking they'd be in the hunt. But yeah, it, it doesn't look uh, particularly good for them on election day. Do you think guys like Faulkner and, and Kylie and Cox are kind of sitting there uh, when Larry Elder joined the race and all of a sudden he just shot up in, in the polls like, oh, my God, celebrity name, uh, just name recognition. The guy's on the radio. He's been on TV. And all of a sudden now we're in single digits and he's up at near 30 percent. I mean, it's frustrating. It, it, oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and also, I think, you know, in the long term, a lot of Republican leaders in California were looking at Faulkner in particular because he's got a moderate profile. Right. Uh, he was, uh, you know, elected in a Democratic city. He's governed, and let's face it, the California Republican Party has been in the wilderness for some time, and they're trying to figure out a way to get back into the game. And they think they need to to talk about, you know, quality of life issues, homelessness, crime, water, environment, and these are things that Faulkner talks about. So does Elder, but as we know, Elder is much more of a culture war warrior. Uh, he he has a more divisive kind of viewpoint on a lot of things. And I think that hurts, hurts Republicans in the long run because they lose on those issues in California. I'm going to ask you a quick one here. Uh, do you think we're going to know tonight the results of this? Uh, we won't know the, the, the final results. As we know, in California, you know, mail ballots and even sure. election day ballots uh, take a while to get counted. We'll see. If the polls are anywhere close to being correct, I think we will see, you know, it will have been determined, if not official, uh, that the recall will have lost. But you know, again, uh, I'll end with the best cliche or the worst cliche in the world. <laughs> the only poll that counts is on Election Day. So we'll see. This is very true. We should put that on T-shirts and hats somewhere. Uh, Michael Smolens uh, from the UT, we thank you as always for the uh, expertise and chiming in with us here. Thank you, Raul.